anyone ignoring this rock and roll stuff anymore. Every hotel and club in the country is wiring for information. Hello, Groove Dogs. Welcome to the Runaway Radio Rewind, a program that looks and listens back to the heyday of one of America's truly great radio stations, the legendary and late KLOL. It's the Runaway Radio Rewind. And now, here's your host, Steve Robison. What's up? It's time for the Runaway Radio Rewind, a look back at the legendary Rock 101 KLOL here in Houston. Today on the show, we hear from a Houston media guru, Mike McGuff. He knows a uh, thing or two about the history of 101. And we have a classic Uncle Waldo for you, too. So kick back, relax, and enjoy it. The Runaway Radio Rewind starts right now. Mike, you have fans uh, for your your blog. Do you still call it a blog? Yes. Your, your, your media blog. You have fans all over the country, all over the world. Certainly, as you're saying, uh, Houston, without a daily newspaper with a media writer, you have filled a tremendous void uh, of interest to not only um, the, the, the industry people, but listeners and viewers in general. Anyone who's interested knows where to find uh, the freshest and inside information, and that generally is, is, is your material. And it's great for the city of Houston because we have someone like yourself that really keeps up with our media and has a national uh, reputation now and a platform. So good for Houston to have this. And here we are on Runaway Radio Rewind, which is a rewind look backward at a very forward leaning uh, broadcast station that was on the air here in Houston for 34 years. And then, like so many of the great uh, radio mothership formats of America, it uh, did not survive a number of things. What do you attribute, generally speaking, to the... Uh, the fact that KLOL 101, Rock 101 KLOL, is no longer on the air. It was taken off in 2004. I, I think there are various reasons why KLOL isn't on the air anymore. And a lot of that, unfortunately, is just the decline in rock music in general. We just lost WLUP in Chicago uh, a couple weeks ago at the time of this recording. And that was a big rock station known up there, nationally known. It was one of the last big ones. There are still a few others out there. But I think with KLOL, really, for kind of a unique Houston problem and it does happen elsewhere but you it was squeezed out because when you had all of the radio companies merging and you know Clear Channel absorbed AM FM and other stations what happened was they suddenly owned three rock stations they owned uh 93.7 the era which was classic KLOL which is album oriented rock or AOR and then the buzz which is alternative and KLOL was just in the middle and it got squeezed out because at that point, you know, the buzz was playing the new stuff and the arrow was playing the older stuff. So KLOL was just left in the middle. And I guess they figured the company said, well, we can launch a new format and we've kind of got everything's covered and we don't need KLOL anymore. Um, and, and also KLOL was a legendary station, but even by the end, it wasn't what it had been it kind of had lost its luster even i as a big fan was not listening near as much as i had in the past and i'll be honest about that um so i think at that point clear channel just decided we need this new format we need to reach hispanic listeners and they went in that direction with mega now over klol's history there were epochs eras uh decades maybe where Things were on a high, things were at a low, things ebbed and flowed like anything else. How do you think that that time period from August of 1970 until November of uh, 2004, how do you think that generally laid out in, uh, 
epochs for this mothership of uh, rock radio in America? Well, there is definitely uh, peaks and valleys in KLOL's history, I have learned. In fact, I even have learned that there were times where they were thinking about changing the format. Things had gotten so bad. But I will attribute this. It seemed like uh, there was a guy named Pat Fant who, who was the program director who signed on the station, kind of the father of the station, a young guy. Com- he came in from another station, and he put it on the air, and it did well, and then he left. And at that point, you can tell, and from the interviews I've done, the station had a decline through that period and that was one of the times that management thought what are we doing here we might need to change formats they started getting competitors as rock music became more popular you started seeing abc who owned other stations in town putting on one uh, on kaum which became 97 rock and then um kilt went from top 40 more to a rock format so they, they were getting kind of attacked from other sides and not really pushing the boundaries maybe as they had but in the early 80s pat fant comes back as general manager and the station has a revival in a sense and he starts putting in a lot of new uh, features and doing a lot of just creative out of the box things that i don't think people in houston maybe (laughs) nowhere else had seen before promotions the whole iconography of the you know, the silver head, the chrome dome logo that people liked back then. And then, of course, he brought back his original runaway radio in a new form, which really uh, exploded at that point. And people are still wearing that shirt today and, and trading stickers of that. So that was really, I think, by 1990 is when it was at the, the top of the the station groups in rock i had won uh billboards top rock station of the year by that point the ratings were insane i'm sure the money was insane the station was making uh then the station is sold from the jones family jones family obviously jesse jones who was a prominent figure in houston and nationally had their family had owned the stations they sell that in the early 90s and it goes to uh, a company called evergreen and, and that was located, I think, in Chicago. It was based out of there, M- maybe not, but it had stations in Chicago. It, it was, you know, a, a decent size radio company. But when you take away the local control of the station, that's when you see changes. Just because uh, in my interviews for the documentary, people would say, hey, I, I could run down and ask Jay Jones, the general manager of the time, or the owner of the time, I need money for this okay, here you go, go do this. And they could do spur of the moment decision making and go out and do whatever they wanted to do. That kind of changes when you become more corporate. At that time, Pat Fan, who's general manager of the time, he leaves and starts the buzz, which is still on the air today. I actually had one person I interviewed, and you'll have to watch the uh, documentary, but he says that He actually cried when Pat Fant left because he could see changes coming with the the new management. And the new management, they weren't from here, didn't understand how KLOA worked, hadn't been there since the very beginning and, and gotten what it was. So at that point, you start seeing the station change. And, you know, it took years, but it just kind of slowly went down. You have new competitors, especially Pat Fan over at The Buzz. The Buzz really jumped up during that time. And, of course, alternative music was a big factor in that. And, and that's going to be hard for a rock station like KLOL, who is competing against this new wave of music. And a lot of its established artists just weren't releasing anything. Guns N' Roses, Metallica kind of went into a quiet phase at that point in fact metallica in the mid 90s almost becomes alternative in a weird way everyone's affected by that none of their core artists they have been playing really could you know do anything at that point all the metal all the hard rock was just relegated to small clubs or the bands had totally broken up and and weren't active anymore so i think you see a a, a kind of a perfect storm arise and then you have deregulation happen in 1996 after president clinton signed that which allowed companies to own way more stations than they were ever able to own so at that point uh KLOL and a lot of the stations in Houston just kept getting swapped, constant changes and ownership. So, you know, every time that happens, uh, 
um, the station loses a little bit of its identity with the new owner. So I think that's what you see in the decline. And then in my documentary, I've talked to so many people about what they think the decline was. So th these are part of the stories, but I could go on for hours as to why they also think it went down. So, Our thanks to Mike McGuff. And when you have a second, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash Runaway Radio Rewind. And also check out RunawayRadioRewind.com. All right, it's time for your Uncle Waldo Fix of the Week. Enjoy. Uncle Waldo, teenage moron type person. <laughs> this, we couldn't use the original title. <laughs> yeah, we had to change the title. You'll see on. This script was authored by Janice Little of Dallas, Texas. As a matter of fact, she handed this script to me in a brown paper bag at Packers last night. Uh-oh. Yes. Mail your script in today. You could win some groovies. Time to go front row center for Act One, Scene One. Of Uncle Waldo, teenage nincompoot moron. <laughs> this is what that says, but go ahead. In Act One, Scene One, a weary Big Bruno finds himself out in a cold torrential rainstorm. I said torrential rainstorm. <laughs> Ah. You gotta get Beautiful you. sound effects. Sound God, effects that's so lame. Well, anyway, Big Bruno walks up to the front desk of the local inn. Behind the desk, yes, it's Queen Aretha. She says to Big Bruno, can I help you? Uh, can I help you, Big Bruno? And Big Bruno replies that he's tired, cold, and hungry. He just needs some place to sleep. Yeah, Queen Aretha, I am tired, cold, and hungry, and I need some place to sleep. Queen Aretha replies, Well, baby, I'm sorry I can't help you because there's a convention here in Dallas. I think it's an Herbalife convention. Every hotel is built, including this one, baby. I'm sorry about that. You're just going to have to... I don't know what you're going to do. Big Bruno insists that he needs somewhere to sleep. Look, I need a room, okay? I'm cold, I'm tired, I'm hungry. Have pity on me, will you? All of a sudden, Queen Aretha gets an idea. Hey, I got an idea. She hands him a pillow and a blanket. He has a pillow and a blanket. She tells Big Bruno to go down the hall. There's a janitor's closet on the right, and he can sleep there. Why don't you do what the announcer just said? That's the only thing I got for you. You mean you want me to go down the hall and sleep in the janitor's closet? That's all I got, baby. Well, okay. Whoa. Big Bruno takes his pillow and his blanket and goes back to sleep in the janitor's closet. Well, time passes, and another weary traveler enters the old inn. Yes, that's our hero, Uncle Waldo. All right. He walks up to the front desk, <laughs> and we hear him say... Uh, yes, baby, what can I do for you? I need a room. I got a... I'm sorry, we don't have no room. How come? Aren't you listening to the radio? Did you hear what the man just said? The whole town is full. We got an Uberlife convention in Dallas, honey. There's no hotel rooms. So I'm sorry. Well, I'll tell you, I'm really weary and tired, you know, mm -hmm. and I, I'm going to just probably throw up all over your desk if I don't get some... No, now, wait a minute, baby, baby, listen to me. Listen to me, sweetheart. Listen. Yeah. yeah, I got your pillow. And I got your blanket. Now you've gone down the hall to the janitor's closet. There's already one guy in there, but there's plenty of room for the both of you. You go on down there and have yourself a good night's sleep. It'll be free on me. Oh. Just don't throw up on my shoe. Fantastic. Well, time passes. Of course, Uncle Waldo takes his pillow and blanket and goes to the janitor's closet. Even more time passes. Soon we find our hero returning to the front desk. With his head down, circles under his eyes, he's dragging his pillow and blanket, and he returns to the front desk. Yes, baby, what can I do for you? Uh, what is it? What are you doing up in the middle of the night? I, uh, I thought I'd send you down to the janitor's closet with your pillow and your blanket. I have a complaint. I uh, What seems to be the problem? Well, I was back there uh, sleeping in the janitor's closet, mm -hmm. and there was this big guy with the deep voice. He, uh... That's Mr. Bruno. Yeah, he he grabs me, you know, puts a headlock on me. No! Yeah, and then pulls out a, a switchblade. Say what? And he says... Oh. That honky had a switchblade? 
Yeah. And, and he says, either you perform, uh, uh, he says, either you funk my bobo, or I'm going to, well, Emmy, you know what he did? What? Pull out a gun, too. What? That's right. He wanted you to honk his bobo? Yes, sir, a policeman around here. No, wait a minute. Yeah, he pulled a gun on me, too. He had a knife in one hand and a gun in the other, and he said, either I honk his bobo or you'd shoot me. Well, what happened? You didn't hear no gunshots, did you? You've been listening to the Runaway Radio Rewind. Join us next week for more memories and goodness for the intelligentsia from the people who made the former KLOL what it was. Find us online at runawayradiorewind.com and be sure to grab your Runaway Radio gear. You can find the show on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and Google Play. Show us your dog, and we'll see you next week on the Runaway Radio Rewind.